Claire Saints taking on Simon Fraser University. I'm joined by Theo, the Holy Juan. Yeah. And again, we're back. A little bit of a longer break, but it's okay. We're almost ready to get going, and uh, you know, it's gonna be a good series. I have the Saints personally um, going 2-0. I hope and they should. Hope so. Uh, if they don't, though, a little bit of a surprise because. We can go over maps. Uh, might not be looking too good unless Simon Fraser has a trick up their sleeve because the map bands we're in and the first map we're going to be on is Clubhouse, a map that the St. Clair Saints are very, very familiar with. They're very good at club. I've always loved uh, their Clubhouse, so that'll be good. Uh, honestly, I would predict maybe I'll be nice. I'll say 7-4 for the okay. Saints on club. If stuff goes the way they, sh they should, uh, at least from the Saints' point of view, maybe a 7-2. I was talking to Swifted. He seems very confident. If they win that map regardless, uh, you know, we'll see. It ends up going, it'll end up going to be uh, Chalet for the second map. And then after that, it will, if it goes to map three, which I don't believe it will, but if it does, we'll be going to Lair. So it'll be interesting to Your see map? how both teams do on that map. Uh, uh, Swifted was talking to me pregame. They're ready for it. They picked the decider. It was going to be either that or Night Haven. So it'll be interesting. We'll see how things go. I mean, about the new map, you know, hopefully we get to see it. Hopefully we don't get to see it, but hopefully we do get to see, you know, uh, Saints 2-0, but we still want the Saints to win. Uh, what about this new map? How do you feel like... Um, it's implement in the game has uh, changed up the map pig bands in the pro scene. Well, a lot of people, and I mean, a <laughs> lot of people hate learning the new maps, especially at such a high tier level of yeah. play. There's so many areas where you could make a mistake and have everything just cave in on you. So it'll be interesting to see if layer gets played, how both teams will play it. But I think I'm pretty excited. I mean, I, from what it seemed like, from what I was talking to the players, they seem excited if it gets there that uh, they'll be able to play well on it. So I don't know. It's going to be kind of one of those things where if we see it, it'll it'll be at first glance, everything, everyone thrown into the fire. We'll just see who comes out on top. What I do want to touch on is that Jocks won the week two MVP oh. for CCL. So he's coming off fresh off that performance. He did great against uh, U Windsor last week. Again, they, I believe, took, yes, they took it in a 2-0 fashion. They took Chalet, which was uh, U Windsor's map pick. And then the first map, they also just absolutely dominated. Uh, it was bank it was kind of well not absolutely dominated they actually both teams started off pretty badly on the attacking side i want to say but then st Clair was able to just have the stronger defense so again you know i think the story of that series was that there were just two teams and whoever could make the more hero plays more often won. You don't usually like to see Siege come down to that. You yeah. want more of a controlled environment. So to me, I think the drone work was a little bit lacking on both sides. That was kind of a big factor of it. And you Windsor just wasn't able to clear Saints out of power positions was I think the big thing. So again, St. Clair, you know, hopefully you uh, have brushed up a little more on the drone work. I want to see better drone work and, you know, we'll see how it pays out here. If they have been working on it, here we go. Underway, first map, clubhouse. Now, if I am Simon Fraser right now and I want to ban an attacker, I mean, it's a little bit interesting right now. We're seeing a lot of Ying bans in the meta right now. We're seeing a lot of Monty bans in the meta because of the new shield update. Well, not new shield update, but the shield update they dropped in the beginning of the summer. So we'll see who they pick. Jox is already calling out Monty. So again, we'll see what they go for. There he is. Armontane being banned out. And if you're the Saints on attack, I don't, like, again, this could be very weird. You know, attack on club, I, I just kind of want to see how this one plays out. On the defensive side, I'd expect maybe an Azami to get banned out. I know Ali likes to do Azami, but we'll see. Grim gets banned out. I actually agree with this. Grim is great on clubhouse when it comes to being able to execute onto site he's really the main guy for the job there so again st Clair not going to be able to have him at his disposal but they picked that obviously so we'll see what happens if i am uh st Clair again 
very good ban on the Fenrir. I like that, especially on the basement uh, on Church Arsenal. Fenrir shines there as well. I really love when teams use him to hold down Boiler. So that's going to be something that I, I guess St. Clair is going to pick up on. If I was Simon Fraser, I would ban Azami here, and that's going to be there exactly what happens. You don't want to have uh, Terror on that Azami when it comes to St. Clair being on defense, especially just because Azami on club is so, so strong. We see Terror with the bro in chat. He hates that. So, again, if I am Terror, you know, you could just pick up the Wamai, but, you know, he loves his Azami. So I'm not very surprised that he's a little bit uh, <laughs> turned at that. So, yeah, who knows? we'll see what happens. Going into the first round, Saints are going to have the Finca, Ying, Ash, Thatcher, and Thermite. Want to get that door, uh, the wall op open with the Thatcher Defender and uh, the Thermite. And on the, the defensive side, with the Jaeger, Bandit, Mira, Castle, and... Mira, Castle, and Malusi. Malusi. So, again, they are going to go gym first. Uh, and this is going to be very interesting to see how the Saints attack this. But based off the lineup that I'm seeing, I'm seeing the Buck, I'm seeing the Ash, I'm seeing the Finca. I mean, if it was going to be anything to me in terms of what I'd expect, I'd expect, honestly, a very quick take. Uh, and it seems like they're going to switch up for the Hibana, so maybe not anymore. But you just see with the Finca, you would assume that there are going to be some aggressive gaps taken on the side of the attack. However, it looks like with the Thermite and the Thatcher, you know, they might just try to do that for Jacuzzi Wall. Again, the Bandit playing there. We'll see if he decides to trick or not. I do like this Malusi that is right under that Lodgy hatch. But first, let's see how St. Clair attacks this gym hold. Yeah, they're going to look to try and take a Garage here, and they are going to have a bit more drone work to do. What do you think of this, uh, this uh, Thermite and Hibana setup? Double hard breach, but they're going to get this wall open immediately and get themselves in a very good uh, position without too much resistance coming out from Simon Fraser early on. Still, some drone work being done as all of Simon Fraser are willing to give up this uh, quick entry, but Saints have to be careful for the swings here. Swift are trying to find something. Bandit, is Bandit tricking this other wall, but Saints, I think, are going to be very happy with the first wall open. I think that's going to be the point of attack here. Right, so I mean, I could have called out that the Hibana was probably going to be used to take the Logi Hatch, although they did have the Buck. The Buck could have just went and done that, but, yeah. uh, you know, maybe he has other plans. Right now, I think the Hibana is being used because of the fact that you have a Mira and a Castle in play. It's just able to use two pellets to clear those out. So, again, that's probably going to be the goal there. The Mira being cleared out of logistics. So now the Mira playing in bathroom herself. It is going to have to be Simon Fraser who gives up that control onto logistics. Never mind, I spoke too soon. Terra's going to be able to get the first one though a great shot from him and as they start opening up that jacuzzi wall it will have to be simon fraser who tries to make a stand it's actually going to be the figure who just dives right on oh into sight goodness. one adrenal boost and already going shoots the blood gadget able to try to find the flash to see if he can make any space oh. but no terror going to be shut down a very aggressive play there from yeah. st Clair, and sadly it just does not pay out for them does not pay out for them as jogs falls kinger finds a couple almost finds the third there the res though comes through still kinger gonna get Get taken down now. It's a 2v2 situation. Swifted and Kirob against Doggo and Hod the Chocolate. You can see the bandit holding, holding this corner with that MP7 as he waits for a backup to arrive. Both members from Sam Fraser are watching this angle, but maybe, just maybe, can enter into A off of that pressure. The Mira here. Is it too good for Hot Chocolate? He's on the wrong side of that, but has a nice little peek there. Onto the feet. Let's see if Swift can spot anything out here. Doesn't find anything there. Doesn't find anything there either. The shots come through. You can see there goes the kill over to Swift. And now it's a 2v1 scenario. Only the bandit left up to the challenge. The plant isn't going to be coming through just yet. I don't believe as they look to get that one down with 70 seconds of Swifted. Will find the kill. And it's going to be Saints taking the first round of the map. A little bit risky there. A great shot there from Swifted. It almost felt like Simon Fraser might have had the Saints found out. There were Z pings going on the Logi, the player in Logi, and when the second one drops that Logi hatch as well, I thought, oh, maybe it's a little bit scuffed. But then they take construction, and through there, I kind of knew, okay, especially if they let one go up onto highway through those windows, you've given up a lot of control, especially the Mira who was trying to sit on the Jacuzzi breach to try to 
peek into construction and maybe hold uh, the walk-in, but that just didn't happen. So again, it was a great move by uh, Swifted, able to take the highway control, finds the mirror, and then through there, I mean, everything else just falls apart. Great job from the Saints, honestly, realizing where the defense was playing and, and just being able to move around it. Yeah, absolutely. Saints just hit them from our, all angles. Kinger found a couple shots there on that thermite, almost found the third. And that was the big entry point that allowed the Saints to swarm from, from all angles. And in the 2v1 scenario, they play that one perfectly now. It's going to be a similar sort of setup from the look of things coming up from Simon Fraser. I think they're not too happy with how last round's defense went. They're going to run it back on the same bomb site, and they're going to have the Bandit again, the Jaeger, the Mirror, the, the exact same team comp. Saints, though, going to switch it up a little bit. They're going to have a Sledge and a Blitz this round, so probably going to look to play it uh, a little bit more aggressively. You can see Havana just going to shoot out those windows. The castle windows are so much to deal with. I was going to say, you have the Finca, you have the Blitz going up to the roof. This screams Logi Drop. They're trying to clear that Mira out of the power position in logistics, and they're trying to take that construction control as well, just so they can make sure that they have ca that cache uh, solidified so no one can get picked off on highway, right? So here, here we, we go. go. It should in. be the line that comes through the line scan, the Finca, the Breach from the Sledge on the Hammer, and the Blitz should be dropping in any second now, but we will see. They're just kind of waiting this one out. It's going to happen anyway. Any second. There are the flashes that come through. The hatch, I'm assuming, is oh. dropped. There it is. The triple drop down logistics hatch. Kinger with the first, but he's going to get traded out by Doggo. And now it's going to be the second pick as well going the side of Simon Fraser. They did a down. great job of countering this out so far. Terror with another one. And I believe that's the Blitz injured, injured as well. Yeah. It's a horrible position for St. Clair. Sadly, the take didn't go their way. And it's a great job from Simon Fraser to be able to counter it out. Yeah, I mean, the Blitz is still alive, so if they could get a Resurrect, that would uh, swing the odds of this round in their favor, maybe, but doesn't look like that's going to be the case, but there, the mirror is going to get taken out. Now it's a 2v2 scenario, but the Blitz is getting rezzed on 1 HP. Now they have that extra shield to work with. Great play by the Saints now. This Bandit trying to do God's work, finds the headshot to 1, does get taken out from the back, is Swifted, finds the double kill to finish off the round. It started so bad for the Saints, but in the end, they managed to clutch it up, and they go up 2-0. Oh. And I love that the kill cam actually shows the Havana sitting on highway there because it's great. It's a great job from the Saints realizing, okay, we know both these players are right above main stairs, right? And we can just take on 90. We can just take the gunfight there. We can have Swifted come through logistics, take the head on head. And if the player backs up, we have that Habana sitting on highway ready to take the gunfight as well. So there was no escape there from Simon Fraser. And the Saints did a really good job of turning something that looked like it, sorry, turning nothing <laughs> into something. something looked like nothing into something. Yeah, it was great play from the Saints to win that one. That's a heartbreaker for Simon Fraser, especially after they got three picks basically to start off the round. but. That injury was not finished off and came back to be crucial. And now you're going to see Simon Fraser University go all the way downstairs. They do not want to try upstairs again. And they're going to have a completely different comp here. Kind of a little bit surprised by the cap can, but it's going to be good against the shield rush type of comp. But it doesn't look like Saints are going to be playing anything like that this time. Right, well, I mean, you have the Capkins, you have the Rooney Gates, you have the Valt Cams. I mean, this is perfect for an operator like Brava, which the Saints have picked on the side of Jox. If Jox can find and can use that drone to find uh, some hacks onto some key gadgets, this could be a very big round for St. Clair. Especially, the best thing would be able to be to take the Valt Cam out of that boiler. So, again, we'll see. It seems like the Saints are trying to go through stock in secret. So, we'll see what they do there. Kitchen as well being a main point of attack. They do have the Habana, so again, the Hatch Queen gonna be able to hopefully get all those hatches open. But I love the Capitao as well. He can be able to support the team, and he's going to be the main man who starts this execute off. If he can stay alive until all of this ground is taken from St. Clair, he can be the guy to send the smokes down, send the fire down, start the push, and he's going to be a key member. And if you're Simon Fraser, that's going to be the 
best guy to take out right now is that Ying or that Capitao who are going to start this execute off for the team. That's a good angle here, but he's going to let go of it just in a time here. So won't be able to find that the flash comes through, doesn't hit too much. Another Bomb utility by used by the Saints as they look to make their way into this kitchen area. Now they have a bit of control there with that sledge can break open absolutely everything on, on top of that kitchen to shoot down on your enemies. Nothing there, but here come the Flash. The Saints might look to drop down soon. The drone will come out. They spot one out in Garage. That's a crucial drone spot out there. Terra finds one. Jux finds another. Swift it finds a third. Terra does go down in the process, but now Saints have themselves a 4v2 as so many HP bars going low. Tachio 160 HP will find one before he falls down. It's going to be all on to Doko Pago. Finds one. 2v1 scenario. Are the Saints going to drop down into the site? And the plant is is down so 40 seconds to play with now they have a player in kitchen and this should more than certainly be the round going to the Saints can be a crucial 1v2 here for Doggo Pogo to kind of keep them in this map of Saints looking to run away with the Doggo Pogo gonna go for the flank here Kinger just in a beautiful position on the Tabana sitting on the high ground and this Thatcher is sitting in tunnel just waiting to hear that sound cue and there it is Kinger finds Doggo Pogo Saints go up 3-0 with another amazing attacking round and I love the post plant positioning right now. You do know that Doggo Pogo was able to pick up the Brava, so you could think as your Kinger, hey, this is a perfect spot right now. I have the Vert on the Diffuser. There's no reason to peek down onto it. I know that Corey on the Thatcher is able to just sit back in dirt and he's able to simply hold and he can play off of sound, right? So again, both Saints doing a good job. And even if Kinger was to die on that hatch, Again, I think the positioning of Corey there is just simply so sublime. Good, yeah. You really can't beat it. And again, Simon Fraser University having to try to claw their way back in on another 2v1. They're not able to get it done this time. And it's going to be a quick 3-0 so far for the Saints. A good job on attack. And right now, if you're Simon Fraser, you're getting a little bit worried. You've already expended your two rounds on Jim. You've lost both of them. You just lost a round on Church Arsenal. You're going back to Church Arsenal. Yeah. It seems like they're really just trying to throw all their eggs in a basket for each site. They're not trying to switch things up. They're not trying to bring that CCTV cash into play. And I don't blame them, because when you ban a zombie off the board, you lose the ability to hold Garage down so well. Top rafters, right? It's where zombie is strongest. And losing the ability to hold such a key position like that, it's going to make you play that church arsenal twice in a row. It's going to make you play that gym twice in a row. So far, it's not looking good. They're going to have to bring out that uh, CCTV cash hold soon. And without an Azami, it's probably not going to be the best. Yeah, absolutely. A Saints on the attack going for a very similar type of team comp they just had with that Hibana, with that Thatcher. They're going to look to open up all these hatches yet again and just play the post plant how they did last time. A similar defensive setup as well. So Simon Fraser definitely feeling confident about their picks and all that stuff here, but Saints are just winning round after round. Still game is from far from over. As Saints look to push the attackers. They're gonna clear out all the upstairs just like they did the round before. There is one roamer up somewhere here for the Simon Fraser University squad. Last time Saints were able to find him early and just take the round with no roamer. Pretty easy this time. Haven't found him yet, but the drone's gonna come through. Jock's trying to scout out something but the Valcams are still up everywhere. Ash gonna take a bit of HP, but Swifted gets the opening pick onto that Valkyrie. That's a great question pickup. A little bit, bit, of, bit of question mark in the all chat. Some trash talk coming through. Terror with a nice headshot there onto Hot Chocolate. I didn't even see that angle there, but beautiful shot from Terror. Makes us a 5v3 for the Saints as Simon Fraser University are just falling apart in front of our eyes. And the reason why Swifted is putting that question mark in chat is because that's the exact same place the Valk died as well, was in Garage, a triple from Swifted. He's absolutely rolling through. The Saints are just rolling through again. Swifted, again, being able to pick off that Valk in stock as well. So again, the Valkyrie is just in Garage and Swifted's been able to pick her off twice in stock. He says he has walls. He has walls, guys. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the thing is, to be picked off there twice in a row, it did look like Simon Fraser were just doing the same hold. They had the cap can on the roam. But right, they had the, the they had the drone. They had they had the Valk playing in the garage. Apparently there was a drone there, but 
again, just not good on the defensive side. They weren't able to pick it off. Good yeah, droning there from the Saints. The yeah, and like I said, it's definitely, that was one of the things I talked about I wanted to see better of from St. Clair this time around. I gotta say, it was really well done. Even the first round, it was because they had the same pre place cam. Yeah, they saw the Valk in the garage. It made Swifted dead off of that hatch that and stock and look immediately while. at the baby steps. That's a free kill. It, exactly, right? So, again, St. Clair all pretty much doing the same thing. Yeah. And they were just able to do it even better this time around because yeah. they recognized it was the same exact hold. And now Simon Fraser gonna go back upstairs. This time, they feel like they have what it takes to defend this one. They're gonna change up their comp a ton though. The only thing they're keeping is the bandit. They have the medic now, the smoke, and the legion trying to slow down the push of the Saints. What do you think of that composition change up? Well, I like the Capital option um, as well to try to clear the top rafters, but I will say, Simon Fraser, I like what I'm seeing out of this lineup right now. You have the smoke. You could either put the smoke or the Wamai, honestly, in top rafters. I mean, hell, you could have the Legion position maybe on the bottom floor, right? So right now, let's just see how the Saints get rid of this server wall. Seems like they are going to use the Maverick to kind of pave their way through, get rid of those bandit boxes on the ground. So there's nothing the bandit can do about this. He cannot trick. He'll be shot in the feet. So he's going to let this wall go. Great job on the execute so far from St. Clair. As they're doing this very quick and efficient. They're going to have that breach there. Probably just trying to see if they can find a quick little wall bang through the feet holes onto that top rafters position. No, but I also do like how Terror is on that highway just holding the cross. So it's a really good uh, setup so far from St. Clair. The question is now simply they have all the key pieces in place. How do they put them together? Yeah, it looks like Simon Fraser actually gonna blow up the wall from the bottom with those shotguns and look from below. So they're gonna change up the way they play this defense. It's gonna be Takio here on this dog, looking to find a pick by Kinger Terror. Find the first two and the Legion Mine's gonna get taken out. Three picks now. Kinger does fall, but Swift finds the trade. Saints throwing everything in there. Terror is down on that ash, so it is a 3v2, but the Resurrect might be able to come through yet again. These Resurrects are so crucial for the Saints, as they're going to take their time. Down under, though, is Hot Chocolate on the smoke. The peak is very aggressive there from that player. The Hot Chocolate does find a pick, but they know exactly where he is. The plant is going to be going down, does not He's find so the shots of where he down. is, and Swifted finds the final pick. Round 5 over round five going over to the saints as they're absolutely blowing simon fraser out of the water discussing on the drop shot look what i'm going to point out is the fact that saint Clair are just they're able to execute so fast that simon fraser's not able to react in time you see the smoke gas canisters coming down they just were simply a little bit too late yes they did catch i believe it was terror on that ash uh, i don't know whether he was shot from uh from red stairs or whether he was just gassed out and got down from there. But the whole point is St. Clair right now, they're doing so good on their execute. I really love just how aggressive Terror and Swifted are being, especially. They know they can win these gunfights when put under pressure, when putting Simon Fraser under pressure and catching them off guard. And I think they're doing a great job of that. They are really paying right now for leaving the Ying on the board. It was one thing I said to maybe think about taking off yeah. in the beginning, but they didn't touch it. Now, to be fair, it might be because of the fact that maybe banning Ying on club isn't exactly the best meta thing maybe you just are scared of that monty from coming in but either way st Clair have shown that they're also not scared to bring up blitz as well right yeah. so they are not scared of bringing in a shield regardless you're leaving one on the table to me it's kind of like well now you're getting burned by the ying right and so again it makes sense why hot chocolate's hopping in this warden he's seen nothing but a ying and a blitz the entire time but because of this info, because St. Clair know that he has the Warden pick now, they're just going to opt to not do anything at all on that Ying or that Blitz. They're not trying to play into the Warden, yeah. so instead they have the switch up onto the Flores. And I really love this because when you're dealing with operators like Goyo and Jaeger, play, uh, operators that have that ground utility, that grounded utility that you can start picking off early, maybe even the Bandit charges, right? Again, that one didn't really go the way of St. Clair, but I do like the Flores pick. There are multiple ops here that the Flores can really take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. And quick shout out to Swift and having an amazing half. He's so half. One. 10 and 1. Just absolutely amazing performance. And the rest of the team following up on that terror finds the opening pick. And that's going to be the go sign for the Saints. They're going to take their time as uh, they have plenty of time to work with. But that Capital 
throw out some utility. Maybe some smokes. And they're going to jump in. Jox finds the second pick. Now it's a 5v3. Saints have full control of the site. It has to be carefully swifted. There is nobody in Garage, but there is actually one yeah, right behind him. As I say that, Hot Chocolate finds a second as well. And now it's a 3v3. It's a good hold from Simon Fraser for the time being and probably their best chance at winning a round so far. Hot Chocolate does come back upstairs, looks for the swing, finds one running through and one drops on the other side. It's going to be Terry in the 1v3, finds one, but now has so much work to do in this 1v2 on this Ash. The wall bangs are coming through and Terry's going to be able to find it through the wall. The plant's going to be going down. It's just the Jaeger alive and he's not going to be able to... The, Denied this plant. The plant comes yeah, through, but dodges out on the attacker. Now it's 40 seconds left in this round. This is a great, great angle from the Ash. But he's going to decide to move over. Does shoot out the wall. Spots out the Jaeger. Misses the headshot there. That's definitely one he's going to want back. So 30 seconds and counting. Has a drone to work with. That is going to be dangerous to use that one in this situation. It looks like the Jaeger knows he has to push up here. Ash just has to play a ring around the Rosie. Nice shots there nice. from Terror in the 1v3 scenario. Able to clutch it up. Put Saints on map point. And the reason why he rotates back over to server is because if you play inside of the cache, you are giving the defender the leverage to either challenge you from upstairs, or if you miss it, he can walk around and yeah. take server. By pulling back there, you're giving the defender no space to really operate behind you. You just control all of his movement in front of you. And it's a lot easier to play around with sound as well when yeah. you're in that scenario. A great job from Tear. But I do got to say, I want to give kudos for Simon Fraser. They did claw their way back in there. It was a beautiful job by Hot Chocolate to being, being able to do as much as he could possibly do in yeah. that scenario. And they weren't aware of the warden who was sitting on the red stairs. So again, a great job. Honestly, by Simon Fraser, it was just at the end of the day, Terror was able to lock in, stay composed. He found the first pick, and I think that Simon Fraser kind of paid by not pay playing a little more passively when they had the win on the trades, yeah. right? They could have kind of stepped back. They could have made Terror really make a move, but no. Instead, somebody just solo peeks him without anybody double swinging onto him. The kill goes untraded, and that's the problem, is in a 1vx, giving someone like Terror isolated 1v1s, giving anyone isolated 1v1s is how how you're gonna end up throwing yeah. that round. Simon Fraser not staying composed. They gave Terra those isolated one and ones, and it's just a little bit of a lesson back into 101 siege yeah. of how to not play a, po uh, a one pick scenario. Absolutely have to agree with you there. Still a great, great clutch from Terra. Nonetheless, and Saints now very comfortably uh, moving through this game, but they have not defended yet. Let's see if maybe Simon Fraser have something up their sleeves. A little bit of a spawn peak coming through there, taking down the Ash to 57 HP. They're going to be using that Finca extremely early on, and doesn't look like they're going to be rushing in anywhere, so maybe a, a bit of a waste using that one so early. Swift did not happy with the fact that he missed out on the freebie there early <laughs> into the round, but still gets some decent damage down onto that Ash. And now the swing comes comes through right around the corner. Terra no way that jumps works. out. He gets back in and Saints are just playing with them at this point. That's definitely not something that should happen, but it is match point. Maybe the Simon Fraser might be checked out of this one and just thinking about next map. You have someone playing an angle like I, I don't understand how Terra can get away with being in that position in, sw in, in secret. Honestly, I thought the double nitro was going to land, but Jox is on an absolute, like, just mission right now. He finds the double kill. I mean, this one is, to me, all but over. Saints just running out at this point. They're trolling completely right now. They're just trying to find anything, like, messing with Saifu. Uh, so... Again, we'll see. It is going to be the pick, though, that comes out. He's on a double right now. 3v1 scenario with a minute 29. It's possible. Saints, you might want to just pull back <laughs> right now and not have any more free picks. Yeah, about They're going to ignore my information okay. immediately. And oh no. <laughs> That's not good. That shot has to be hit from the Finca there. Jocks just simply better aim. Flicks onto the head. It's going to be all she wrote. 7-0, a flawless victory on their map of choice, Clubhouse. And I talked about how Terror was going to be so lethal on that Wamai earlier. I know we only got to see one round of him. But the fact that he was able to stay in secret for that long, I mean, that like, 
what's going on guys 12 and 3 for him with three assists gets the mvp of the match swift did as well with 10 kills to his name didn't have to really do much more after he was yeah. going 10 and 1 the rest of the team just kind of played uh through and he was able to just kind of sit back i think let tear just completely take over in the in the end there an amazing game from the saints in general i really liked what i saw out of them especially their drone work it literally led to the first two rounds being yeah. uh tidied up when Simon Fraser went on that church arsenal defense so I don't really know what to say it was just utter domination by the Saints it's as easy as you can put it yeah it's a very very good map from the Saints 7-0 uh, about as flawless as you can get and we're going to be moving into map 2 it's going to be Simon Fraser's pick here so maybe we'll see Simon Fraser turn it up a notch and pull out some unique strategies that they have prepared what would you like to see from them to maybe get themselves back into this match well, I'll be very honest. I think I got to see a lot out of them. A lot. Um, there, there's a lot of questions to be asked uh, about really everything. Um, I, I know I, it sounds like I'm really laying it on harsh, but at the end of the day, I'm just calling it like I see it. Uh, that was just simply not their map. They were simply outclassed, and they're bringing the Saints to Chalet, a map that they might feel confident on, but St. Clair literally did win 7-1 last time versus you Windsor who that was their map they yeah. said okay we're comfortable <laughs> on chalet we want to bring the Saints to chalet and they got 7-1 so I again I will say chalet is a map that I know the Saints can play uh can play well um if they peak then you know they're we, they're one of the hardest teams right now in collegiate to stop on chalet I would imagine uh especially because they're just fresh off an Akron uh win not because it was on chalet but just because their mental is probably the best it's been in a long time right now so at a Simon Fraser University, I'm going to have to see a lot. It's not impossible, obviously, <laughs> if they can turn it around. But I'm worried that the mental chalk of getting a flawless yeah. uh, sweep on them, 7-0, might eat into them a little bit. Well, we will see. We're going to throw it to a very, very quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Map 2.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. This is more R6. We're on Chalet. We see the first two bands coming out. It's going to be Grimm and Monty. So it will be St. Clair banning out the Grimm on attack, Simon Fraser banning out the Monty on attack, and Valkyrie. then Simon Fraser banning out the Valk on defense. What do you think of that Valk ban on defense? Well, I think it's, uh, like, again, Chalet, uh, Valk's honestly good in any map if you just know spots. Um, uh, Valk's one of the best defenders to me in the game because info is everything, intel is everything. The Fenrir getting banned out, not surprised. I think the problem is, though, Simon Fraser have just played into the hands of Terror, who, if I had to imagine, is probably going to pick up that Azami pretty quickly. Yeah. We'll see. He's been an absolute demon on that character the entire season. There it is, there literally, it is. right? So, I mean, you could not call it any better, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I do this right now. But no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Aruni on the Swifted uh, as well. Swifted on the Aruni. I mean, that. <laughs> Aruni on the Swifted. But on the side of Simon Fraser, let's see. They only got to do one attacking round yeah. last game. We'll see how they fare this time. And I'm not very surprised at all that I'm immediately seeing this mezzanine hold out of St. Clair. They love to do this. We'll just have the Aruni play up there and look in the library. And they're going to just make sure that the Surya gates are placed around that area. Uh, and it's going to be Simon Fraser. They, they did this again against Windsor University as well. Lancer gaming. Oh, we're not Lancer gaming, sorry, just Windsor uh, University. So, again, let's see this time around. We've seen it once last week. Let's see if Simon Fraser can simply break down this hold or if they're going to fall victim to the same thing. An early spawn peak right now from, I believe, that is Kinger in trophy. It is going to be the Doc in trophy. We'll see if anything comes his way. Doesn't seem like it, though, early. Some drones being picked up. And, yep, this is going to be that, I believe, library take, although the Finca does not want to go there. I believe the drones may have realized. Nope. Okay, the team will go for a library take. It's a little, it's a little you, you know, too early to call. But that library take is going to be very difficult. They have the Azami set up. They have the Frost mats underneath the windows set up. I mean, Jox is picking up right where they left off. The Saints are playing so aggressive on this defense. It's only a matter of time before first pick goes down. The question is, whose side is going to be on? Yeah, absolutely. Saints love taking these early charges on defensive end. Swift that does get tagged up. Lucky his head didn't come off. There's theirs. And Fraser playing this one very, very impatiently. And not getting much progress done now. They're gonna have the drones coming out. And on chocolate fighting right. with that one. I don't know. It's gonna get in there. A lot of time off the clock ready for the Saints and not too much progress for Simon Fraser University. They don't want a last second all out just a rush through the door. The Pinka will be popped as Sfu did get taken out. 70 HP. It's a great angle here from a Swift at the drone. Will come through. They do spot out. More shots come through from both sides, but nothing there yet. You just had those frost mats. Just having to look down for that one second as you're jumping through a window could be the difference between life and death. Some shoots and shots come through there. Force Poo won't be able to find the early pick, but there it is. The terror will be the first one to fall, and there's an injure as well, I believe, on the attacking side. So it's actually a 44, but the rest come through. Takio's up, and Kinger falls down as well. Double kill now for Abbas. It's a 5v3 Swift that does get one back and gives Saints some hope in this round. It's a great angle from this Frost. Still a minute and taking is now Simon Fraser in the 3v3 scenario. Have some place to work with here. Jocks in a very bad position. Does great get job. taken down by Hot Chocolate. 3v2 scenario for Simon Fraser as it looks to take their first round of the series. Still a lot of work to do. Kirob and Swifted have been in these scenarios again. And uh, Simon Fraser does have to make their way into these bomb sites relatively soon. They are still in a main. But let's see how they decide to play it. Hot Chocolate finds the headshot onto Swifted. It's going to be all up to Kirob here in the 1v3. Does get spot up by the drone, which makes this incredibly harder. Goes for the swing, doesn't find it still. Is able to maneuver, finds the opening pick. Nice shot there, 1v2, 20 seconds of thinking. They need to get this plant down in a matter of time. The diffuser is picked up. He oh, doesn't be able to spot one now, does not find the headshot. Three kills for Bazin there, and is gonna give the first round of the series to Simon Frazier University. Well, there we go, Simon Frazier. I mean, first round of the series, granted, it does come in in map two, but that's a way better job of clearing out that same. Claire Saints defense. I really loved how they had someone 
on the windows looking into that uh, piano hold, or not piano hold, the uh, mezzanine hold, and they baited out Terror to move up a little bit with the Selmas, right? So the ace threw a Selma on the wall, right? They were able to bait out Terror to try to move a little more forward to find the angle onto the Selma so he could shoot the Selma off the wall. He thinks he's denying a breach, but what ends up happening is, I mean, he is, but what ends up happening is it's it's one sum of being wasted for your entire life on a zombie, which is crucial because you gain Kiba barricades over time. So again, a great job there from Sun First University. After they got that first pick, I had a feeling that library was gonna be all theirs to the taking. They didn't actually end up having yeah. to do that at all. Whoa. They went through office balcony and I was kind of surprised, but I liked what I saw there. St. Clair just making a couple of mistakes. Simon Fraser doing all they can to capitalize on it. And they've done a great yeah, job. They go. take that first round. Yeah, now Saints are gonna opt to go downstairs here. And let's see if Simon Fraser University decide to go for a composition that can break through that garage. You see they both the Habana and the Thermite. But there is a blitz on the side of St. Clair to try and deny that. Um, what do you think is best to just try and take the floor above and just work your way down or just brute force it through his garage door? Well, they don't have very many operators, especially with no ram to take the vertical control. They haven't brought a buck or a sledge as well, for that matter. So I don't really think they're going to be fooling around too much with the vertical plague. Based on their comp, they have the ying, they have the ace. They're actually bringing a double hard breach, and they have the dokabi, which they're going to also have oh, on shot. the EMP impacts. It was a run out from Swifted, but it's not going to work out. This bandit trick should come through, actually. I believe it just did enough to get rid of the thermite charge, but the Selmas might be able to go down so while we switch over to that breach we'll be able to see what happened in the end yet the thermite charge gone but the Selma did go through it's a great job though from Corey Rob he gets rid of the main asset and now Simon Fraser are gonna look to reposition yeah Simon Fraser forced to look at plan B now as plan A did not go as planned and it's gonna be Saints down a member but still having good defensive stature as terror does fall down for the second round in a row here. Going able to find anything before falling down, but they do get a pick back, so it is a 4v3, and Basin is on 20 HP, so a couple more shots could turn the tides here. Nitro Cell doesn't find anything, as it looks like Sam Fraser are starting to make their way into this attack. They drop the diffuser, but outside as Jox is on the Giga flank here. They're not able to find anything just yet. You can see Kinger and Corey just. 2v4, trying to hold on, Kanger falls down, it's gonna be all Tori on this side, goes for the swing, doesn't find it, 1v4 scenario for Jogs, you could definitely see why Simon Fraser University picked this map, they're just completely running over the Saints as they take their second round of the half. I love what I'm seeing out of Simon Fraser. The first take on the snowmobile breach doesn't go as planned. So what do we do? We reposition immediately. And it's an amazing job there, efficient as well, to realize, hey guys, this isn't gonna work. Let's just all go through West Main and take that boiler control and do a wine take instead, right? So it's a great job there from Simon Fraser University. I love that they realized that immediately. They took full advantage and they just made the play that needed to happen. They played it slow, they played it smart, they were just taking their picks as they came, and eventually they were able to con uh, commit to a flood. So yep. it was a great job by Simon Fraser. I wish I honestly saw more of that slow, methodical buildup without getting picked off in Clubhouse, but it just might not have been their map overall. This is definitely a other completely different side of the story here. Yeah. They're looking amazing on Chalet. And honestly, I mean, if you're a Simon Fraser fan, you hope to definitely continue to, to, to oh my God. <laughs> continue. Continue seeing more of that play, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think first map that one attacking around, I think they're already over with that map. Down 6-0, they weren't gonna give it their absolute all and they just got gunned down, but here, New map, 0-0 zero, zero scoreline. Now they put their foot on the gas, but we do have a disconnect, by the way. That's the reason for this quick little pause. Hopefully get back on track quickly. But as you said, Simon Fraser just looking like a completely new team on this second map. And Saints on the defensive end are going for these early challenges and like spawn peaks and dangerous shots. And the first two rounds, it just hasn't worked out for them. Do you think they're gonna slow down with that type of playstyle, or do you think they're gonna keep going for the aggressive early picks? Um, I think if you're on the side of Simon Fraser, you keep doing the slow play style. It's not Absolutely. working. The Saints are the ones right now that are trying to push aggression, and I think they're a little bit in over their heads. Mm -hmm. They're trying to keep up that same like cocky play style that was working for them 
off of one round defense on club. Different story. This isn't your map pick. I get it. You won 7-1 last time you were on this. But right now, if I'm St. Clair, honestly, I'm just going to be real with the boys. They need to lock it in here because they're making mistakes that just shouldn't happen. I mean, I get the run out. But at the same time, it's so aggressive so quickly. Like, I get it. You get the call there on the wall and everything. But if you're swifted, I mean, this is going to be the first time I really, like, dig into him. You either need to find a pick there or you need to just not go for that at all. Yeah. It's it's not something that turns the round in your favor, especially on defense so early on when you could just let the attack come to you. St. Clair on the defense are trying to bring the attack almost, and it hasn't worked for two rounds in a row now. Yeah, I think they're going to try and shy away from that kind of very aggressive play. So I think they first round, they were like, oh, it just didn't work one time. Let's try it again. I think after the second time, I don't think they'll be thinking third time's a charm. I think they're going to let this uh, really aggressive play style on the defensive end go and just play the defense very, very slowly. As Simon Fraser has been the slower team in the second map, and it's led them to a 2-0 lead. Yeah, again, they're just playing with really good composure right now. And I really love to see the lineup out of Simon Fraser as well. I'm a big fan of the Flores. I'm a big fan of the Ying, especially when you have those Kiba barricades, those frost mats as well. That's an easy thing you can get rid of with the Flores. So I like what I'm seeing right now. My concern is what do you do to burn out that Aruni gate? You could just use a drone, I guess, but you don't want Finca necessarily using her nades for it. You sure as hell don't want Sophia using her breaches or concusses for it, and you don't want the Ying burning a Candela off of it. So what do you do? We'll see here, but I really do think the Aruni pick for St. Clair should come through for them and it, I do like it a lot because actually looking at the offense sure they have a lot to throw at those Rooney gates those Suri gates but whatever they throw it is very valuable and could be used for a way better purpose so we'll see how they attack this so far yeah minute 55 remaining Simon Fraser. You can see they're not rushing anywhere. They are taking their sweet, sweet time. And this time, I think the Saints are respecting that. They do have a player up here, upstairs. It's going to be hard to hold this all by their lonesome. It's going to be an early swing coming through here from Terror. Let's find the headshot. Doesn't find it. Just runs away. Except that position there. As Simon Fraser have not made any progress. Has to be careful there. As the head peeks out, shoots out Invisible Frostman. Swifted, though, does get picked off again. These first picks for Simon Fraser has definitely been a big reason to why they're doing so well on this map. A minute 20 and counting. Simon Fraser trying to find something. Terror going to fall down as well as Saints are just completely falling apart right in front of our eyes here. They do get a free pick, though. Jox picks up one, looks for the second, is able to find it, but does get out with his life, which is so, so important. Now a 4v3 for Simon Fraser University as they keep looking to push their advantage. But Saints have kind of given up some position here. Simon Fraser have made their way deep into the building. It looks like they're going to throw out some flashes here. Don't want to run through that doorway because don't know if anyone's on the other side. The Finca will get popped. The challenges come through and the 1v1 is going to be won. But Corey does find the trade on the flip side of the map. 2v3 situation for the Saints. 30 seconds and counting. Simon Fraser need to get into these sites and need to plant this bomb relatively quickly. They're still outside. It's going to be a long way for them to go. As Saints probably in a very good position now to maybe win this round. Bazon is in here on the Finca. But jumps out. Looks for the headshot. Nice challenge there from King. The shots come through yet again from Doggo Pilgo will stay alive for the time being, but only 12 seconds left. Saints just have to try and stay alive here and deny the plant from coming down. Hot Chocolate will find one around the corner, finds the headshot. Kinger was just not around the corner, but three seconds left. Will the fuser get planted? Yes, it's going down right now. Doggo Pilgo does have that one. Hot Chocolate will make sure that that comes through. Now it's going to be Corey in a 1v2 situation on this frost. Looks around the corner, doesn't find anything post plant. It's going to be so hard to win one on two unless you find a pick very, very early on. Doesn't look like Simon Fraser are going to allow that to happen. 30 seconds and taking. He knows one player has to be behind this angle. But Hot Chocolate is on the other angle as Corey goes down. Simon Fraser take a 3 0 lead. And again, I want to point out. I thought the Surrey Gates almost saved St. Clair again. There was it was came down to 12 seconds, but I gotta bring it up right now. Swifted has been first picked twice in a row. I, and that's me forgetting who was first picked the first round, right? I mean, for all I know, I, I don't believe he was three times in a row. But again, it's Terror right after on that Azami. They're losing 
very valuable members of their team so early. And I get it. Aruni puts down her gadgetry in the prep phase, makes the rotates with her punches, Attack makes the sight lines with her punches in the prep phase, but you're still a valuable gun up, especially something like a DMR. I, I mean, Attacker it's just confusing, I guess, why it, it's happening. Simon Fraser is just doing a better job. I gotta be honest, like, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it to him. Simon Fraser has looked simply outstanding. Hot Chocolate hasn't even died yet. I love what I'm seeing out of Takio. And Bowsen, I mean, he's six and one right now. Somebody shut him down the side of St. Clair, but as far as I'm concerned, I love what I'm seeing out of these guys in Simon Fraser. 3 0 to start right now, and they are looking absolutely phenomenal. They're playing slow again. They're just letting the picks come to them. They're not really wasting any utility early. Now, granted, that almost screwed them over in the last couple of seconds, yeah. but they made it work. Yes, sometimes you have to just burn that health in order to find the chance and get the pick, but. They made do with what they had. They took what the defense gave them, and I really liked what I saw out of them for all three rounds so far. Yeah, absolutely. You could see why they chose this map. The attack has been outstanding so far. Cross mat there. Ash does shoot it out, which gives away the position there. It's going to be another slow attack coming in from Simon Fraser University here as the shots are going to come through. Nobody is there. So they haven't really gone too fast, as we've been saying. Saints took them to the very last second that last round, but the plant did come through just in time. And uh, these early picks have been absolutely uh, crushing for the Saints. Playing every round 4v5 is definitely not the start you want. You can see Terra could take that peak, but decides not to do so. I'm just going to play his life for a tiny bit longer, which is maybe just exactly what the Saints need to win this round. Right now, the mirror window being broken is a great start for Simon Fraser, and they're gonna do it yet again. They're gonna find that first pick, and it's gonna be Terra, the Azami, dying so early. That's almost three times now, I believe, where yeah. the Azami hasn't even been able to live past the one minute and 30 second mark. It's absolutely hectic for the Saints. They have to try to find something right now. They're getting completely outclassed so far. Dokubi Call comes through, and now Simon Fraser can start trying to take this library position, trying to clear out that mezzanine player on the side of Jocks, he has to vacate his area. He has to f surrender that positioning. And now it's going to be the vertical angles that Simon Fraser can just use for the taking. Hopefully they have some drones they can use to create that. Maybe some breaching charges from the Ash. Who knows, but either way, to give up vert on a site like Bar is just not a great way to start. So again, with a minute left, let's see how Simon Fraser does this. They're draining health right now on Swifty. He's taking a couple shots or whatnot. He's at 80 health, trying to get this roam through Piano, Library Hall as well. Do they know about his positioning? I don't actually believe they do. He's gonna be able to find the first pick on a hot chocolate, and now it's Panic Stations on the side of Simon Fraser. Can they pick it up off? No, not quite. The double kill for Swifted gets the Dokubi down as well. A great play there from Swifted, but he is gonna get picked off. 1v2, but Corey able to ice the attack. A great job from Swifted, sweeping down, lurking through piano, lurking through that library hall. Simon Fraser has absolutely no idea where he came from through those West Main stairs originally. He finds the flank up through Solarium, and he's gonna be able to find two, and honestly, through a hero play, yeah. take a round for the Saints. Yeah, I was just about to say, you were speaking about the hero plays they made last week about uh, against the University of Windsor. That was definitely a hero play that Attackers could have very well saved them this entire map as Simon Fraser University still had a chance in that round, even with that hero play coming out. The Saints finally put one on Attackers the board and it's a great start to this comeback. Only two more rounds on this defensive end. If they can win one, maybe even two, get a little bit greedy and tie it up at three apiece, I think they'll have a very, very good chance at winning this map on the attacking side. And again, with Dining Kitchen being the site, it's gonna have to be kind of a new look on the side of Simon Fraser. I'm very surprised actually with where the Saints have gone so far. I mean, around on basement, around on bar, around on um, kitchen dining. I, I'm kind of surprised that the Ram hasn't been brought out yet to take Vert. In fact, Simon Fraser hasn't brought really many operators at all, if any, yeah. to take Vert. But why bother? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I exactly. mean, I'll be so honest. That round, last round, should have been Simon Fraser's. If somebody yeah. like just doesn't either potato on that Mozzie or finds out about Mozzie's position, that round is Simon Fraser's from the taking. 
I mean, immediately, oh. Swifted again being taken out first. Wow. Are you kidding me? Swifted, what is going on? You've been first picked almost every single round. Simon Fraser laughing all the way to the bank so far with these first picks. They've done it four times out of at least the five. I, I think they've actually done it four every times round. out of five. Maybe even every round. They've gotten the first pick every round. Yeah, look, I, I got to say right now on entry, they're looking amazing. St. Clair, you got to pick it up. You got to tighten your bootstraps. You got to lock in. And there it is. Kinger looking to do just that off the back of a nitro. Ties things up 4-4. And takes out the thermite. That's a great, great pickup yep. there. The hard breach going to be down. And it's going to be so much harder for Simon Frazier to push in. Now Terra finds another pick onto Baz. And now the tides are turning for the Saints. They get a couple kills in return after another a shaky start to the round, but it is far from over. Minute 46 and ticking. And aggressive peak here, maybe coming in from Takio player right around the corner. But he has no idea that there is somebody here. Terror upstairs looking for maybe another pick. Does get taken out 64 HP. Has to be careful here. He's going to be able to find the swing around the corner. No, he's not finding anything. We'll just get out with his life, and I think that's a great play to do at this exact time. As long as the Saints can keep their numbers advantage when it comes down to this chaotic last second push from Simon Fraser, I think they're going to have a really good chance at winning the gunfights considering they have an extra person but let's see how Simon Fraser decides to push the attack as you said they don't have too much vert to work with as Kinger finds a pick onto Sfu that's a great shot they see one right around the box and the shot comes through from Kinger yet again it's gonna be only Doggo Pogo left alive nice shot there oh, from Kinger yet again three on the round for him as Saints bring back another round and now they're only down one in the last round of the half the king of Library Hall right now is Kinger finds multiple on the side for St. Clair. It's a great job by the Saints. And I will say, what I really liked there is from Jocks and from, I believe it was Terror. Yes, Terror went for some really aggressive plays. And if it didn't go in his favor, I wouldn't be giving him this praise, but I will because of the fact that he made the decision along with Jocks. They're roaming. They've done what they need to do. They've done the damage. The Thermite's gone. Just peel back, guys. Play okay. your lives. Play the player advantage. Let them have to burn even more time off their attack with a minute 17 remaining to try to drone out those areas that they think you might be in and then leave it for a panic execute. They weren't even close to being near Kitchen. Yeah. And how much time was on the clock when the round ended? Not, Not very much. much. Not much. So the whole point is they did a great job of time burning there and getting out and it allowed for Kinger to go up those blue stairs somewhere where absolutely no one from Simon Fraser even had a hint of info on right so great job from Kinger there great job from the Saints that round on defense and I'm telling you I think they'd be a lot I think this game would have gone a lot differently from the start if St. Clair simply didn't play cocky and started playing a lot more like this a lot more disciplined on defense yeah, I you hope to see it more what I do want to see more of as well is Swifted. Please make it past that two minute mark. <laughs> you have a minute, I'm sorry. I gotta call you out on it, man. It's happened three times in a row, and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna let that slide. You've been first picked a lot right now. I know the type of caliber player that you are. You don't usually have that happen to you. Oh my goodness. So, I expect a lot more out of you, son. I hope you get it done. So, we'll see on the side of St. Clair what they do. I do like that they're playing a lot more safe, though. Jock's taking some damage through the wall to start things off. But so far, so good on the side of St. Clair. They haven't given up yeah. the first pick yet, <laughs> and it's almost the two-minute mark. They can kind of peel back, start holding their power positions, and I would say play a little more slower on defense, boys, if you want to pick up more rounds. Yeah, I mean, the slower you play, the more chaos the attackers have to make in order to win a round so if you're just going into their sight lines and taking these 50 50s and you're losing you give the attackers so much more freedom to do whatever they want but if you're 5v5 and you have maybe one roamer two roamers somewhere on the map it makes it so hard for simon fraser to get in you don't even have to find any kills just be there know that there and there you go kinger finds the opening pick onto takio and that swings the favor of saints way in their favors Step who does fly in, finds a pick back onto Kinger and Terror yet again gonna fall down here. Doesn't find anything there. Now it's a 4v3 for Simon Fraser as they have just completely blown the Saints open. They aren't fully in yet, but these two opening picks makes this round way easier for them. But on the flip side, Corey Rob finds a huge pick onto Sfu, making it a 3v3, and the spike is nowhere near being the, uh, near the bomb. Right, I mean, the reason why I was just kind of like, uh, is because of the play that happened oh, in Solarium. It's a great job by Swifted. 
being able to shoot up the barricade finds the player from Library Hall, and now he's just going to try to sit near that nice Library shot. Hall at piano. A nice shot from Corey as well. Give him the double, and now all down to Hot Chocolate, playing on the upside down repel. But does he know about the player on Solar Stairs? I believe he does, and that's why he's just going to vacate back up to the roof. He has 45 seconds left, but I won't lie. He's going to need a little bit of a miracle if he wants to find this 1v3. Now, the Saints, again, they could play this very smart. They could play very stupid. We've seen kind of a little bit of both. Yeah. So right now, you got to hope they stay disciplined. I hope that they don't give them any more 1v1 isolated gunfights. They should be double stacking up. I don't like to see this. This is a very aggressive challenge you from Josh, challenge but he's going to be able to leave it and, I guess, live for just a little longer. Nice there shot, he is. Though. He finds the shot eventually. And I do like that he re-peaked that. Usually, I wouldn't like seeing players repeat that angle, right? One, it is Jocks. I can trust him somewhat. But two, he waited for the other player on St. Clair to wrap around and tab mezzanine. So the second that office balcony player gets exposed, the cross angle is found. So at least they're playing off of each other's contact. I like to see that a little bit more. If Jocks died the first time there, I would have been a little bit ticked yeah. off. Because I would have been like, well, there's no real point in that. You can wait there. Jocks does the great job of getting back, calming with his players, knowing he has the cross, and he's like, okay, I know you have my contact, I can repeat this, and Ego Chow. And he finds it, gets on top, he gets uh, the top of it. So, again, a great job by St. Clair. They tie this thing up swiftly, 3-3. Three, three. And now it is all St. Clair for the last three rounds. They're going to hope they can continue this momentum up on the attack. Yeah, momentum, a big part of it. They've won three in a row. They are kind of grooving through this game. But the sides have been flipped. It's going to be Saints back on the attack. They were flawless on the last map. So hopefully they can keep the same kind of energy, but a different map. And it looks like a completely different team in Simon Fraser than map one. It's going to be hard to just left. breeze Four, through them like they did last time. And it's going to be Simon Fraser opting Attackers to go upstairs the for this hold. I wonder how Saints are going to attack this one. They have the Blitz. They have the Dokubi. They might just try and just rush through with this Blitz and just cause chaos on the site. Right, but I got to say, um, Sfu on the Warden. I don't know if it's Sifu or Sfu. I get that, but... What I will say is the counter to the Blitz is being played right now. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see what Simon Fraser cooks up. It is going to be the first shots. Were any shots landed there? I swear I saw something being burned. It was the Dokubi call. Never mind. I'm just checking all the bars right now. Nothing happening over there. But for the side of St. Clair, they're trying to get rid of this library hole. This is a common position as well being played by the Warden. Just right in front of the bookcase on the hatch. He can just simply kill anybody on the jump in. Oh. And however, Joss is going to find a knife. And then Swifted, I believe, getting traded up. The Blitz is just in sight. That's what happened. We didn't see it, but we saw a good enough view of it later jocks with a double the execute happened for st Clair so fast i'm sorry we just didn't catch it being able to find the knife kill with the blitz and then the second one as well it's all st Clair so far two players on one shot though doggo pago he can make this work does he know about the player swing on him through the hallway it is going to be terror to clean it up no not quite st Clair with a great take i wish we saw that blitz, blitz jump yeah. in just a little bit earlier there but it's okay it was, it was the round, though. It was defining a great job from Jocks. They're off Absolutely. the back of a Dokubi call. And again, they did a great job of just playing very aggressive on the attack. And this is the spot where, yes, St. Clair, you can play aggressive now. Yeah. Please do some of that. Because again, maybe not on the defensive side, but on the offensive side, it looks really, really good. So again, great job from St. Clair. And I'm not surprised that they don't want to double down on the Blitz. Usually when you see it once, that's kind of just a surprise to the enemy. You don't want to double down on it. It becomes predictable. Sfu, Saifu, whether it is on the Warden again. But this time, it should be completely baited out. St. Claire aren't bringing any flashes, so this operator pick is going to be relatively useless, barring flashbangs to come through. So we'll see how Simon Fraser deals with that. The Mira being brought out as well from Hot Chocolate, who was, I believe, I want to say four and one. Now he's five and he four, four and so he slowed down quite a bit. And uh, same with Bowson as well. The guy who I know was six and one earlier, yeah. eight and five. So. Again, the players in Simon Fraser, you know, when you lose four rounds in a row, yeah, obviously you'll see in the KP, or sorry, in the, not KP, KDA, uh, that you'll see them slide a little bit. But on the side of St. Clair, they're just on a train right now, and they're not thinking of stopping anytime soon.
Yeah, they're gonna look to play quickly, I believe, on these tags. But as you said, Blitz kind of just a one round. Hey, if it catches them by surprise, it's a free round. But if they're ready for it, it's gonna be very, very hard to just catch them by surprise twice in a row. So see what Swift tries to do on the defensive side, having a bit of a rough half, but hopefully on this Ash can turn things around. And it's gonna be terror. Now on the Maverick, gonna look to burn that wall. It does care one off. Corey it finds hot chocolate instantly. And a bit of shots coming again. Terra finds a pick onto Bazin. And it's just Simon Fraser falling apart as Doggo Pogo falls as well. Takio does find a pick onto Terra, but the trade comes through. Now it's a 4v1 situation. Spoo getting killed through his own Mira. That's a very, very quick round for the Saints as they go up 5 3 and put themselves two rounds away from taking the series. I love that Mav play. Any Siege players there. Mark that down. That is something that's been uh, done through maps before. Like, for example, on Club, on that single wall in construction. The Saints do it this time on that uh, bar wall. They're able to have the player just sitting on main stairs ready when the Maverick has that blowtorch, clears a line through. And if you see anybody on there, if you see any color that isn't gray on the back of the wall, you just fire into it. It was a great job there lined up from Corey Rob and a great play together. Terra able to find another one after that as well. So again, it's nice little plays like that that St. Clair have in their back pocket that just gave them around like that, right? I mean, through there, it was just all St. Clair. They rode off the momentum. And I, got, I won't lie right now, if you're Simon Fraser, the mental might be getting a little bit shocked. They really need to seriously start to find a round here because this is their third bomb site. And after this, they'll have to start picking bomb sites for the second time in a row. So again, St. Clair have the advantage right now for sure. They've already won on almost one of each. They need to try to find a pickup here on to basement. This could be the game defining round for Simon Fraser. If they go down six to three, it's gonna be a very tough ask. And you see the glass picked up for the side of St. Clair. Not something you see too often, but if they can open up this doorway, that glass through those smokes can be an absolute menace. So let's see how Saints decide to play it. Yeah, I already know how, what they're gonna do, by the way. They're gonna line up on the snowmobile wall. They're gonna have the Maverick um, blowtorch the align about crouch level through, and they're gonna smoke it. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna Glad. smoke the breach. There it is, they're gonna smoke the breach. The Maverick's gonna then blowtorch around mid-height level, and the glass is just gonna sit on this. And no player from the side of Simon Fraser can Looks challenge like it without being seen from the glass. And there, there it is. is. Jock's able to find the pickup. It came from a Korean strat that was seen in Pro League for the first time. People really picked it up after that. Shoutouts to the Korean Siege for showing us all of that strat. And now oh, it is going to be Saifu on the side of those library stairs to find a return trade onto Terror on the Ash. Yeah, but now Saints, let's see if they decide to push through that doorway. Doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. They're gonna look to push from somewhere else. Terror falling down really does slow down their attack even after getting an opening pick, but still 4v4 for the Saints. And they have a bit of damage done onto that Jaeger. Nitro saw kind of wasted by Hot Chocolate. There was nobody from the Saints even in the vicinity. The Saints have completely given up on the garage push. They're looking to push through the barrels and wine on the other side. So let's see how they decide to push this one. Swift it does take a tiny bit of damage, but finds the shot onto Swoo. That's a huge pickup as he's going to be in a prime position now to cause chaos upstairs as the rest of the members from Simon Fraser are down here. There's two right on top of one another. Kinger looking for shots around this corner. You can see Kari Korob very, very far up there, but does get a drop down, Kinger. And Korob can't find anything. That's gonna be a couple kills going over to Simon Fraser. He's now Saint stuck in a 2v3, actually a 1v3 for Swift, that he's gonna go down. Simon Fraser pick up a round. Great defense from them, as from getting first picked, bringing that round is not easy, but they do. They put themselves one round behind the Saints. And you would think getting first picked there would be absolutely mentally chalking, especially off of a known strat that I think, honestly, if you hear the Maverick blow torch going off you see the smoke on the breach with nothing happening that's kind of a key sign any high tier player should realize that strat that's going to happen but for some reason simon fraser they just didn't pick up on it they get the first pick against them but what i love to see after that is they don't get shocked in the mental okay it was a mistake it happened so what we're still on defense we can let the clock do the work for us we can just stay put turtle up and find these picks one by one make them peak make them challenge angles that are not likely winnable for them 
right? So again, using a good job there on the defense, just pull back, make sure you take defensive sided gunfights. Simon Fraser, I'm very impressed in the way they came back there, and you gotta give all credit to them. Absolutely, it's a crucial round for them. If they lost that one, that might have been all she wrote. Saints almost winning six rounds in a row again, but now they will be slowed down and stopped for the first time on offense all series. So Simon Fraser should definitely get a kick of confidence from that performance they had on the defensive round, but still a lot of work to do. Saints two rounds away from taking it all. Simon Fraser trying to tie this one up at five apiece and it's going to be a pretty aggressive comp here from the Saints. They have the Finca, they have the Ash, they have the Capital to find some sight lines that they can close down and on the defensive end you can see some interesting pickups as well. The player to watch here is Swifted on the Deimos. Someone who hasn't been brought out recently, but the last time I saw Swifted play Deimos, it was on CCL week one on border. He dropped 19 kills. So loves the operator. Someone who is really used to not only clear out roamers and make the move from their original positions, he's great for comms, but Deimos is a great operator to just confirm around. You usually don't want to use your scans too soon, so I'm a little surprised that they burned one on the Mozzie this early, maybe because they just had a drone on him and they knew he was deep roaming uh, off of site. But no, that's not even the case. Either that or they made him flood back to site. E either way, it's not usual you see a Deimos uh, using a scan that early. Deimos being an operator, you usually want to try to confirm around late for you. But now Cory Rob able to find a pick of his own. The Deimos going down, actually and that's not good. A round confirming op like Deimos is not good to lose oh, early, shot. but Terror, he's just going to be oh, able to find two oh. as well. Has the one tap. Have a day. Jock's cleaning up the final two. St. Clair off a beautiful shot by Terror, and they just kept peeking him through that pixel one by one. No reason to do it. I think the smoke could have definitely laid off. No reason to peek down yeah. the library hall. Terror plays Peeker's advantage, and he's able to just He's able to just clean the heads off of two of them. Absolutely brilliant there on the side of Terror on the Ash. It's everything they needed for, everything they asked for. Simon Fraser, I got questions for you. It just didn't make too much sense to me. Yeah, I mean, they have been playing a great map so far, but just a tiny collapse could cost them everything. As now Saints put themselves on map and match point, and they only need one more to take it all home. It was a bit of a rough start for them on the second map. Simon Fraser really did challenge them on this map, but yep. the fact that Saints were able to stay mentally fortified and win all these rounds has been a very, very good sight to see. You said they're very mentally... Uh, they're a very, they're a very uh, emotional team. Emotional yeah, team, yeah, no, and they, yeah. the fact they're a three-round downswing didn't change uh, much, and just they kept playing, they kept playing well and played better and better, even when down. Uh, very, very good performance from them so far, but it's still not over. Simon Fraser, a couple rounds away from pushing this one to overtime, and they're going to need it badly if they want to hold the second floor. Uh, Saints have basically the same kind of uh, comp here on the attack, but Simon Simon Fraser changing things up defensive. And again, you know, if you're St. Clair, the attack went so well even after losing the Deimos first, right? I mean, I believe it was Swifty who got first picked yet again. Yeah. And you're still finding that round. I mean, that's incredible, right? So, of course, you're going to bring the same lineup. Hey, if we can lose a Deimos and still pull it back with that comp, something's going right. So, regardless, it's going to be St. Clair to see how they want to attack this second floor defense again. Match point, 6-4, like you said, 225 on the clock. St. Clair trying to make their way up to the roof, trying to get that bathroom window control, maybe bust out some of those castles as well. It'll be interesting to see how Simon Fraser plays along with it, but is St. Clair aware of this player who's neatly tucked near the bathroom? Yeah, Saints haven't found anything early, but have all their members alive, which is not something they could say at every two-minute mark. In this round, they find some shots onto Takio, and there goes Terror with an opening pick. Beautiful shot from both angles for the Saints as they find Hot Chocolate. 5v3 scenario now for the Saints. They jump in. Ash is going to be leading the way here, looking for the opening pick on the castle, but also 5v1, and just in a blink of an eye, Saints get a flawless round, a flawless victory as they take this series two games to zero. I mean... When they roll, they roll, man. Like there's no, like I'm, so, like that's the thing, right? When you have an emotional team like this, and they start to go crazy on the front foot, they start realizing their pushes are working. It works like a charm. No pun intended. For yeah, I was about to say. Right now. But uh, again, great series from the Saints. Uh, again, a couple of questions early on in that chalet map, but it seems they tightened their bootstraps, got it together, and really just 
did amazing overall. I got to say, I mean, I'm very impressed, I think, overall by Kinger's performance, especially throughout these two series. Did all he had to on Clubhouse. Didn't really overstep his role on that Clubhouse win, but then really showed up for St. Clair on Chalet when they were down. There were so many times where he was the guy making the big plays, finding those double kills. And, I mean, big shout out to you, Kinger, because yeah. you really did, I think, play a crucial role in that Chalet win. And, honestly, it's with support players like him, they're usually... Uh, locking down the hard support roles, right? I mean, he's done such a great job Absolutely. so far tonight. He did a great job last week. He's a great, he's a high caliber player. I expect a lot out of him. He delivered tonight. And I got to say, kudos to you, man. Yeah, another great performance for them. Another 2-0 victory as they keep their winning ways going. And hopefully they can keep their winning ways going for a long time. You know, uh, they had a good season last year. This year, they're going to look to even uh, surpass the the goals expected. So off to a good start this year. And, you know, they're looking very, very strong. Uh, what are you expecting out of them for this season? Uh, again, very much like I said on the Rocket League team, I expect loads of great things from this season. I think Swifted is an absolutely phenomenal player. One of the best, I think, uh, personally, in collegiate, I would uh, think for now. He's had such a great effect on this team. I know I'm kind of gassing up a little bit, but like, <laughs> okay. I got to be honest. He's he's a great change uh, for the for St. Clair. I think it's working. Love what Tara's been showing as well. Yes, Chalet, I will say, was a little bit of a rougher map for them, but that's why you have your players like Kinger, like Corey, who can step in, who can be the uplifter, and who can get the team back on track. They did just that. Great job to all of you guys tonight. But... We've been here for a pretty long time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's getting a little late. So we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you to everyone who's watching. Shout outs to everybody in the back room. I'm going to forget there are a lot of names yeah, out here. Yeah. So I'm just going to say shout out to the back room. You guys are troopers back there. We could not do what we are here to do without you guys, right? So great job there. Shout out to all the players as well from both sides of every matchup we casted tonight. Yeah. Shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to the SRC, the SEC alumni, Subway, Tim Hortons, and Alienware. Alienware. So thank you. Yeah, thank, <laughs> so, yeah, you. thank you guys for that. Shit. And then tomorrow we have Overwatch 2, I think the Super Conference League. There it is. It's going to be at, 8 p at 9 p.m., a bit of a later start, but it's going to be a very, very good matchup. You know, Nate's Super League, the, the highest possible league. So it's going to be insanely good action. But that's it for us today. I've been Theo, no one's at Holy One, joined by Patrick Chambers. Thank you guys for watching and have a good night. See you tomorrow.